गुड आफ्टरनून एंड वेलकम टू पी एम विद्या चैनल आई एम मुक्ता कांडियाल एंड यू आर वॉचिंग पी एम विद्या चैनल एंड इन टूडे सेशन द सब्जेक्ट वी आर वी विल बी गोइंग टू डिस्कस इज सोशल साइंस एंड द टॉपिक वी आर हैविंग इन टूडे सेशन इज सोशल साइंटिस्ट इज ऑन द वे एंड इन टूडे सेशन वी विल बी गोइंग टू आंसर सम ऑफ द क्वेश्चन दैट हैव बीन पुट अप बाई आर स्टूडेंट्स रिगार्डिंग द सोशल साइंस सब्जेक्ट एंड टू आंसर ऑल दीज क्वेश्चन टू सम ऑफ द क्वेश्चन वी विल ट्राई टू इंक्लूड मोस्ट ऑफ द क्वेश्चन इन आर टूडे सेशन सो Uh, to answer all these session we are joined by two expert today so the very first expert with us today is dr chandra shekhar balachandran he is director at the institute of geographical science bangalore welcome sir and good afternoon thank you and the second expert we have today with us is dr m v shrinivasan he is professor of economics at ncert welcome sir yeah thank you Okay, and so our viewers, I would like to say, if you have any question apart from this question, because well, in today's session we will be going to answer some of the questions. So, in case you have any question, you can dial us. Our number is eight eight zero zero four four zero five five nine, or you can join us through our email address at, as well. Today's uh, email address is dth dot class ten at the cit dot nic dot in, and today's session is for class ten student. So you can watch our live session of this uh, program on PM Vidya channel number ten. So I'll uh, just start today's session, and I'll head directly to Shrinivasan sir, and I'll ask first question that is asked by uh, Hiranya from Hyderabad, Telangana sir. Uh, the question is, what is the difference between social studies and social science? Yeah. Thank you, Mukta, um, for uh, asking this question, and uh, uh, good afternoon, uh, my dear uh, students. I'm sure uh, the April has started, and you may be preparing for examinations, and. Uh, <clears throat> hope uh, you all um, face this uh, examination with a lot of self confidence and uh, wish you all uh, uh, best of luck for your forthcoming examinations this issue of social science is one of the important subject in um, in school systems if you look at uh, uh, you may be aware that uh, you may be studying social science as a subject only from class 6 onwards but if you look at uh, from your class 1 onwards you will find many topics of social sciences are introduced in schools so one uh, in some schools uh, some states it's called social sciences in some states it's called social studies so that's why this question some students have asked why in some schools it is called social studies and some st <coughs> some schools it's called social sciences so for understanding this we need to understand uh, how uh, a subject is coined for example your name is so and so my name is shrinivasan her name is mukta similarly the all the knowledge that we are learning in schools are also named differently why they were named differently so all these knowledge systems are all having some similar characteristics for example if you do all the calculations of counting division multiplication all those involves some kind of mathematical skills arithmetic skills so that particular knowledge form is called mathematics suppose you do lot of observation going to the field looking at the nature and studying the nature and seeing why it is happening looking for reasons that is called natural science similarly if you are talking about the people society if you try to understand the society it is called social sciences so social sciences is not a one uh, one discipline it can <coughs> it, it composes many knowledge forms for example if you are talking about the people who lived in the past that is called um, history if you look at um, uh, the nature's interaction with the human beings how human beings interact with the nature particularly the space the geography so that's called geography so similarly uh, if you're talking about the how people govern themselves that is called political science so similarly so every knowledge form has some similar characteristics so those knowledge forms which are uh, put together which are dealing with the human beings which are dealing with the society in which we are living that is called social science so you may be wondering why why this uh, social science and whereas in some states it's called social studies okay. so the major difference between these two is that if you are talking about particular discipline for example if you are talking about um, suppose let us take development so if you talk about development and generally people talk about income how people earn income what kind of jobs they are doing it so that if you look at from that angle that is called economics okay but development also can be seen from various other dimensions so major difference between the social sciences and social studies is that if you focus more on the disciplinary boundaries for example if you look at the development from only from economics view point that is called social science but if you look at from the development from all all subjects in an interdisciplinary form that is called social studies 
So you may be wondering why it is called social studies. For example, in Telangana, some students ask why in my state it is called social studies. That is because social science is a very big discipline. If you if you introduce discipline, it will be very difficult for children. And also, teachers have not evolved their own uh, methods to teach social sciences very different way for children. So that is why, because it is difficult for children to introduce disciplines, uh, uh, social studies emerged. In social studies, we talk about very simple, some important aspects, and then we introduce to the children. Okay, some important aspects which they come into contact in their daily life. For example, when you go to market, you buy things. As a child, you may be buying many things, actually. Hmm? So those ideas, you're also talking about money. You're also talking about uh, farming activities. You are also, your parents are also maybe engaged in fishing activity and many activities, occupations. So those acti activities within the society, which you can understand. So these were introduced in the social studies. So without the disciplinary boundaries like economics, geography, history, political science, if you try to understand the society, it, 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 comes, it forms under social studies. Thank you so much, sir, and uh, for answering uh, Hiranya's question to you. Uh, now I'll move to Balachandran, sir. So we have one more question uh, from one of our students. Uh, she's Sheetal from Hyderabad, Telangana. She asks, why are some topics related to physics like energy from the sun are dealt within social studies? Sure. Uh, let me share a screen uh, page that I've created for our discussion here. Sure, sir. Uh, knowing that we don't have enough time for all of them, I just go that particular part of it and I'll also keep the link that anyone can follow easily. So let me share my screen with you. Okay. I'll just let this for a few seconds so that uh, if anybody wants to note down the link to this page, they can note it down. Uh, the question was about why are we studying uh, physics and such related kind of things in social studies? Yeah? So let me just get to that question. This is the question, right? Yes, From sir. Right. So the answer to that is that when we look at Earth as a system, it's an energy system. Everything is ultimately tied to energy. Part of the energy comes from the sun, part of the energy comes from within Earth itself. Overall, the total amount of energy that is coming to Earth from the sun, one, which is not falling uniformly on Earth, and two, that the Earth, Earth as a system tends to want to uh, distribute that energy uniformly throughout. There is never any place on any two places on Earth which have the same exact amount of energy at the same time. For example, it may be solar energy, it may be heat energy, whichever it is. Which is why, uh, for example, when we have uh, differences in temperature of air, pressures also differ. Because the pressures are different, the air from higher pressure areas move to lower pressure areas. Likewise, when water is at a higher level, given a chance, it moves down in to reach the sea, the ocean, or some body of water has been collected. So these energy differentials are what are causing a lot of the processes of Earth that we talk about, that we need to know about. To understand weather, to understand the work of wind, to understand the work of rivers, all of these requires a good understanding of natural science and of mathematics as well. So, uh, as Dr. Srinivas also just mentioned, these boundaries that we have that says this geography, that is physics, this is chemistry, those are our creation, they are artificial. We have made them just for our convenience, that's all. But nature doesn't work that way. Nature, uh, Earth does not say, okay, this is geography, I do this here. Everything is interconnected. Any boundaries we see are our creations, merely for convenience, no more. So, uh, partly because of this, when we study Earth as a system and try to understand it, we have to know natural science and mathematics. 
to go to the next question. Next question. Sure, sir. Thank you so much. And my next question is for Srinivasan, sir. Uh, we have one more student's question. Uh, she's Kulsum Banu from Kardil, Ladakh. She asks, why does Earth crust has tectonic plates? And how do we say that uh, the tectonic plates collide with each other? I think we can ask this question to Dr. Balachandran uh, would be in a position to answer. Sure, uh, sure. Being a jogger. I have it here. Let me, let me just share this now. Yeah. For each of the geography questions, I have uh, On the four questions. So, this is the question from Kulsum Bayan, right? Is, is this the question from Kulsum Bayan? No. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir, you are. Yeah, so is this the correct question I'm showing on screen right now? Is that the question you want to plan? Yes, sir, that's, that's the question uh, from Kulsum, uh, yes, sir. Uh, this answer to Kulsum, excellent question. Uh, there are many types of evidence to show that all of Earth's uh, surface, what we call land, was at one time one piece. And there are many number of evidences. The uh, list of slips I've shared here to tell you uh, what those connections are. Now, what has happened is as Earth cooled down to form a rocky planet, the, the liquid mantle that came to the surface cooled down and hardened. When it became hard, that is what we call land. Part of the land is underwater, part of the land is above water. We live on the part that is above water because we don't have keys. So that part that we see as the hardened surface, either below water or above water, we call those pieces of land continents. Parts of the continent are underwater, parts of the continent are above water, and we just happen to live on the, on the land surfaces above water. So I've given uh, two different videos I've embedded here. It was a very well made and I think they will really help you understand how the movement has occurred over time and how we know that there are similar, uh, that these pieces of land are actually parts of the same one, same piece that once existed. Okay. So, uh, if you look at similarity of land forms, similarity of life, both of those indicate that uh, these, are, these plates actually were once part of the same piece, now they have broken a different part. Sure, sir. And we have one more question for you. Uh, she's, uh, the question is from Pranuma from, from Tamil Nadu. She yes. asks, uh, the size of continents and countries are distorted on world map. Why these things uh, are not mentioned in textbook? Is it possible to develop correct maps, uh, maps using latest technology? Sure. Uh, Prasuna, here's the answer. First, I'll take up the question of, is it possible to create uh, correct maps using modern technology? Okay, they're close, but there is no map that is 100% true. All maps are in some way they are lying. There is, not, there is no choice about that because we are taking a three-dimensional globe and trying to represent it as a flat surface, a mass. So, uh, why is it not mentioned in textbooks? For it's here, plans are not the authority of that. But let me show you what happens in a very popular uh, method of showing a globe on a flat surface. That process is called projection. Okay? So, this projection, uh, give me a moment, let me this here. This projection that we most commonly we see is called the Mercator projection. It was developed by somebody called Mercator. Notice how, if you look at the places around the circles around the, at, on the equator, they are of a particular size. That is the correct size. In the magnetic projection, as you go away from the equator towards the poles, notice what happens to those surfaces. They become bigger and bigger and bigger. Well, in reality, they are not big, bigger, but the map shows them as if they are bigger. And to show you how beautifully this can be understood, here is a, I've given a link in that page as well. Here is that site. You go to this site, and let us say we want to see. Uh, 
Notice how big Greenland is. To see the true size of Greenland, we select Greenland and we drag it to the equator. Notice how as I drag it, it becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. When I put it on the equator inside of Africa, you get to see the real size of Greenland. So Greenland is not as big as since out of the back, but when you do this, you get the correct size of Greenland. Right? You can do this with any number of countries that are given the link, go and explore. Play with it. That's the best way of learning. Okay? So now, uh, can we make maps based on new technologies? Of course. Better and better technologies are coming up, better and better maps are being made, but there is no map that is 100% accurate. No. But we can still make better maps, and they are being made. Any number. Any other questions? Thank you so much for answering Prasuna's question, sir. My next question is for Srinivasan, sir. sir. Uh, since we already, you already have told us the difference between sir, social studies and social science in our session today, we have one question from again from Hiranya. She asks, why are we taught social studies but not social science? Yeah, if you look at uh, the way the uh, disciplines are coined, uh, is based on the scholars in different disciplines. For example, if you take interstates of India, or in many European countries, you will find the term social studies is used. For example, in contrast to this, for example, in United Kingdom, it is still history and geography are taught. Yes. There is no social studies or social sciences. The three reasons, in my view, I can say that why uh, in in some states in Tamil Nadu or in, uh, in some states it's all social science. In, in Telangana, it's social studies. It is because uh, one is that the the social sciences are very abstract. It is very difficult for children to understand. For example, if I say uh, gross domestic product, for young children to understand what is gross domestic product, you cannot see invisibly. Okay, it is uh, happening in the mind actually. So we have to understand in, in terms of abstract sense actually, because many topics in social sciences are very abstract. So the, the scholars who are um, formulating syllabus in textbooks, they are saying that why we have to ch unnecessarily trouble the children at a very young age. So the, the concepts are very abstract. That is first reason. The second reason is that the, the, the if we introduce social sciences, we may not be able to connect the, the ideas with the directly with the daily life. Okay, in the uh, in the case of uh, uh, employment, we can connect, mm -hmm. but the children are very young. They may not be able to understand the complexities of employment, wages, profit, and earnings, and so on. So because it is not connected to the daily life issues, so that is why why it is not introduced in the form of social mm -hmm. sciences. The third reason is that the uh, even though we may call that uh, uh, India is a Vishwa group, we have been teaching in Gurukuls for many decades and centuries and schools are existing for hundreds of years. But however, if you don't have a particular methodology, if you don't have a methodology to teach a particular topic, there is no point in introducing uh, that topic into the curriculum. Because the methodology is not existing, because teachers may not know how to teach this topic, that is also one of the reasons why we are uh, not directly introducing the social sciences. So that is why in order to help children, young children, uh, uh, we introduce uh, the social sciences and uh, social studies rather than social sciences. Social science. Just it is for the school children, you need to understand some amount of concepts related to the, uh, your daily life. That is why we are introducing social studies rather than social sciences. Thank you so much, sir. And uh, my next question is for both of, for both my experts. I'll ask uh, Balachandran sir views first on this question. The question is from Ajay Jha, uh, SCRT Delhi. He asks, how can we develop interest in different subjects of social studies? Okay, cool. Uh, let me go back to this page and then I'll address this question here. Uh, how can we develop interest in different social sciences at a time? That at a time is very crucial part of that question to me. Uh, the best and Shrinivas was talking about how uh, it's difficult to, for children to connect with these things. One way of addressing that issue is to take examples from their lived experiences connecting that to uh, whatever topic we are discussing. So for example, uh, if we look at uh, what is a resource, we can ask children to identify things that are not used at all and what would make that, that thing a resource. How would they make that a resource? That is one way. Uh, another thing to look at is to put the uh, connections among things. 
Uh, a given a link that we uh, takes blog, the blog is called connections, where I connect all sorts of things to see how geography in this particular instance makes uh, sense. So if we look at latitudes, the textbook generally tells us about latitudes being horizontal lines and so many degrees and boring, beyond boring. It has nothing to do with anybody's life, forget children's lives. What we need to do is to take that and connect it to things. For example, right now, Ramzan is either has started or is about to begin, I think. Uh, how does Ramzan connect to latitude? So right now, if we look at uh, the length of day at various, in various parts of the world, that varies from place to place. It's based on latitude. So from that, we can understand if you are a practicing Muslim who wants to fast during Ramzan, which latitudes is it easier to fast in than which other latitudes? Application of understanding of latitude. And this has to direct connection with the length of day. And then from there, the direct connection to the rule of fasting, and that is from sun up to sun down. Those timings vary from place to place at any time of the year. So these kinds of linked experiences can make a lot of difference. So, uh, one suggestion I would make to uh, Mr. Jha is to check out the connections blog on our site. That might give you some ideas, it might not, I don't know. It might give you some ideas on how to connect things in social science. Thank you so much, sir, yeah. for sharing your views on the question asked. Uh, since we have only two minutes left into our session, I'll quickly ask Srinivasan, yeah. sir, to share yeah. your views as well. I asked, uh, thank you. This, uh, I asked the uh, child about this issue, how a uh, subject can be made interesting. Um, I can repeat his answer. Uh, three things that he suggests. One is that the in the classroom, uh, teacher need to raise a lot of quiz, simple questions for children to answer. The quizzes are the major exciting way to uh, make the children uh, interested in the subject area. The second is the stories. So the teachers have to connect and tell, create many stories or bring in a lot of stories to the classroom that will make the social sciences interesting. And thirdly, for example, if there are any characteristics coming in the book or in the syllabus, we have to talk about some exciting events. For example, when we talk, to, <laughs> when we talk about Akbar, mm -hmm. uh, we have to talk, tell something about what is so interesting about Akbar. For example, Akbar cannot read and write. He is an illiterate person. Though he may be emperor, mm -hmm. but he cannot read and write. Yes. So children have to be given with this kind of episodes that will make uh, small, small snippets. Mm -hmm. That will make the subjects interesting. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure this is an important question we will take up in some other session also. How every subject can be made interesting at a particular point of time. Mm -hmm. But so uh, we can take it up uh, a little later. Definitely, right? sir. And if we are I may use it for just one moment. Dr. Srinivasan, you just described my high school geography teacher, Mr. Narasana. That's exactly what he did. All three things. Yes. And he was a performer. He was a very active performer in class and never stood in one place. Very animated. That animation is very important to teach any subject, especially social science. Definitely. And I th really thank you so both the experts of today for joining with us today and answering so much of questions. We tried including more maximum number of questions we could do in the session. So thank you so much again to both of experts for joining with us today. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. And thank you so much, sir. Sure. So, and I would like to ask our viewers, uh, don't go anywhere. Keep connected with PM with the channel. We will be back with our another show. Namaskar.